Hi all. Today we will see how we can integrate Webpack Module Federation into a single spy ecosystem consisting of two Angular applications. So these Angular applications have been built by making use of the standalone components. So in my previous video, I had covered this particular topic, how we can convert an Angular application to be constructed by making use of standalone components alone and how to integrate them in the single spa ecosystem. So if you have not seen it, please take a look. I have provided the link in the description. So here I have a single spa application with a root config and two Angular applications which are made up of standalone components. So if you go to the main single spa.ts, you can see that this consists of bootstrapping the app component directly. It's basically an Angular application having standalone components. So now this is our application. So when we refresh our application, you can see that initially we have the Angular 1 application which is loaded here. And when we click here, at that time the Angular 2 application is loaded. So you can see that here there are two main.js which are getting downloaded. One is for the Angular 1 application and other is for the Angular 2 application. The main aim of our demo here today is to integrate Webpack Model Federation so that we can share some of the common bundles that is utilized by both these applications. So as you know, certain Angular libraries like Angular Core, Angular Common, Runtime, all these are common to both these bundles and these are actually included in both these bundles. So using the model federation, we will be able to share these common bundles between these applications. So let's get started. So first, let us integrate the module federation to our Angular 1 application. So for that purpose, what we can do is, in a single spy application, we have a file called extra webpack config. This is a JavaScript file, which is being consumed by the builder. That is a custom builder that is made use in single spy Angular. So here, we need to add the configurations for integrating the module federation. So first, you can add the module federation plugin which is available in Webpack 5. And then we can add some configurations to this JS file. So let's go through each of this config. So first, we are defining the output parameter where we define a unique name. So here we have given it as ngmfe1. And then we, we are turning off the optimization for the runtime chunk. And after that, we add the plugins array. So to that existing array, we are merging the module federation plugin. And here, since we aim to share the common modules, that is like Angular core common, etc., we need to provide the details of these libraries within the shared object. So here we have given the Angular core, and these are the various options which are available. So singleton basically means there will be only a single instance of the Angular core, which is shared by both all the applications. We have set it as true, strict version, which basically means that the version of the Angular which is being shared by these modules or applications, it should be the same. And we can also provide the required version. Here we have given it as 15.1. And the same thing we have repeated for Angular common, router, RSJS and the single spy angular. And once we have done that, here we have an option called name, where we give the external name of our federated module. And we also give the file name, which will be the name of the entry file. That is basically, we need to load this file name first so that the remaining inner dynamic modules are loaded. So here we have given the file name as remote entry.js. So when we build this application, a separate file which has this name will be generated. And here we are exposing the different modules which we are exposing from this application. So here 
I have created a module called MFE module 1 and it basically points to the main.singuspa.ts which is this file. So this is basically the entry point of our Angular 1 application. So once we do that, let us rebuild our application. So I am running the serve command for the Angular 1 application. So the build for our Angular application 1 is completed. Now I have made the same changes for the Angular 2 application as well. The only difference is the unique name that is ngmfe2 and the name also which is different and along with that the exposed module name is also different that is mfe module 2. All the remaining configurations like the shared modules everything is same. So once we have done this let's build our angular 2 application as well. Angular 2 application is also built. Now we need to make some changes within the webpack configuration of our main application that is the app root and there also we need to add some configuration for the module federation. So these are the changes. So first we make use of the module federation plugin and here within the plugins we added a new entry for the module federation and here we have defined the name as the home application and here we have added a key called library which tells that the type of the exposed module which we give here that's actually a variable and not the actual path of the our remote modules so here within the remotes we define the different remote modules which we will be consuming within our application so this is the variable name that is ngmfe1 which will be accessed within our application that is the appload config and this will be the name which we have exposed from our remote applications. Once we define these remotes, we will be able to make use of these variables within our application to access these modules. So the other things remain the same, the file name where we give it as remote-entry.js. Here we are not exposing any modules from within our main application and also we are not sharing anything between the angular application and the root config since we do not have anything in common. So once we have done this, again we turn off the optimization. Let us restart our application, that is the root config. So for that, we can run the npm start command. Our main application has also been built. So now when we refresh our application, you can see that we get an error like the shared module is not available for eager consumption. This is because here within our index.ejs, we are currently again accessing the main.js, which is the default file which we download in a common Angular application. But since here we are making use of the model federation, we need to import or we need to add the script remote entry.js from this path. So here what we can do is we can add a script tag here. So we'll just copy paste here. HTTP. We can copy this path. So instead of the main.js, it will be the remote entry.js. Same thing we can import for the Angular app second angular application once we have done that we can also import the root config so here i am adding the script so since it is from the same domain we can just use the relative path and once we have done that here we have the system JS import map defined here. Actually, we will be able to remove that. And here in the current application, within the app root config, you can see that I am making use of the register application in order to register the Angular applications along with the route. 
So this can be done in two ways. One is by making use of the register application and other way is by making use of the layout engine. So in this case, I am not making use of the layout engine. So here, what we need to do is that in the index.ejs, whatever name we have defined in the import map, that same name we will be trying to system import here within our register application. But since we are currently making use of the module federation, we can get rid of the system import. So first, what we can do is we can remove the these two parts, that is the production system import map and the development import map. We can remove that. And we can go to the app root config. We can change the system import into normal dynamic import. And for since we have not defined this name anywhere, what we need to import is that the names which we have defined here, that is the variable ngmfe1 along with the module name which we have exposed. So that we can get from our remote module, that is this module name. So once we copy that, you can provide it here. Same way you can provide the name here for our Angular 2 application as well. So it will be the variable along with the module name. So once we have done this, our application should be good to go. So again, we have some error, but our application has loaded. So this is because we are making use of the system import here to load the app root config. We can just remove that as it is already loaded from this app root config.js. So now when we refresh, you can see that there is no errors and we will be able to load our applications without any issue. Now let us go to the network tab and refresh our application. So this is our root application and which loads the Angular app 1 for the default path. So here within our app root config we have defined that when either the Angular 1 path or the default path is coming we will be loading the Angular 1 application and for the route Angular 2 we will be loading the Angular 2 application. So now when we load the default route, you can see that instead of the single main.js file, we have multiple files here. And all these are the Angular core, the Angular common router, and all the related files which we have defined in the shared modules, as well as the other dependencies which are used by the Angular application. All these are created as separate files. And our main file, that is the remote entry, that is the entry point of our application. It has been loaded initially itself. And also, since we have loaded the remote entry for the second application, it will also be loaded here. But the actual second application itself won't be loaded. And once we have loaded everything, when we navigate to our second application, you can see that only a single file is getting loaded for the second application and the size of that file is much less that is only 52.2 kb compared to the 2 mb which are the size for our main.js file so this way you can see that all these modules which are being used by both this application it will be downloaded only a single time so this is one major use case for making use of the module federation in single spa application with angular so in the sample application which we saw till now we had made use of the register application directly in the app root config.js so now let's see how we can implement the module federation in an application making use of the layout engine so when we build our application using layout engine we will have two components one will be the layout of our application which will be an html so here I am making use of the single spa router and the mode is hash so that we will get the hashed path and we have defined the default route that is for the angular 1 application and for the angular 2 path we are defining the 
Angular 2 application. When we go to the default route, it will automatically redirect to the Angular 1 route that is loading the Angular 1 application. So once we have defined the routes here, what we can do is that within the app route config that is generated, here we have a section called load app. So here we will be passing name as an attribute to the application tag. So the same thing we will be able to access within the load app function. So what I have done here is that the name which we pass here, I have created a map for the key will be the name which we pass from outside and the value will be a dynamic import which loads our federated module that is the exposed variable, the remote variable and the remote module. So same way for the Angular 2 application, we give the, the remote module to be imported dynamically. So once we have done that, we just return the value from the corresponding map. So in case the Angular 1 application is needed to be loaded, we just give this dynamic import as the return value. So once we have done that, so you can see that when the default route is loaded, our Angular application is loaded by making use of the module federation. And you can see the, all the shared modules which are loaded only a single time and when we navigate to the second route you can see that the angular 2 application is also loaded so one difference between the test application and the layout engine is that in the layout engine you can see that both the bundles the bundles of both our applications are loaded initially itself so when we navigate to the different route it won't be loaded a second time but in the case of a register application the second application bundle will be downloaded only when that particular route is activated. So that's the only difference which I could see between the REST application way and layout engine way. So hope you were able to get a good idea about how we can integrate module federation into a single SPA ecosystem using multiple Angular applications. So the main use case is that we will be able to share the dependencies between these applications. See you soon. Thank you.